most people are missing so much by just you know looking at the the urban and suburban world from a purely human point of view you just you're missing 90% of life I'm Dick Cannings. Uh, I live here in Penticton. Uh, I've been interested in birds since I was very small. I can't remember when I wasn't. And I work with birds uh, right now. That's my, my job, my life, my living. Two hundred birds nest in the Okanagan, and it, that makes it the most diverse place in North America, really, for breeding birds. There's fifty or sixty species at risk in the Okanagan, in the South Okanagan, uh, and that makes it the real hot spot in Canada for species at risk. And that's a combination of, you know, this diversity the unique species that aren't found anywhere else in Canada, the fact that most of those species occur in the valley bottoms where, the, you know, we humans want to live. So you have this sort of collision of habitat loss and species diversity, which sort of is inexorably results in a good high number of species at risk. There's been loss of the riparian habitats, the, the habitats along the creeks and rivers and lake shores. You know, probably 80% of that habitat has been lost over the last 100 years. And all the species that use that habitat, of course, have de declined as that habitat has gone. And now, of course, as people are looking for nice places to live, places to retire, you know, housing developments creep up the hillsides and start to impact the, the ponderosa pine forests as well. You know, the character of those forests have dramatically changed. And that affects, well, anything that goes after ponderosa pine, like white-headed woodpeckers and flammulated owls. You know, birders are very good at, at noticing this habitat decline because, you know, they like to see all the species every year or every month. When they go back to their favorite spot to, to see species X and it's gone, it's something else, uh, they notice that. Real iconic species for me growing up here in this house and yard uh, was Western Meadowlark. This used to be grassland where we're sitting. And when I was born, you know, for the first five years of my life, that was slowly changing into an orchard. But for the first few years, the Meadowlark still came back and nested in our yard, you know, because this was their land, this was their territory. Of course, after 10 years, there was just that much less habitat for Meadowlarks. Part of what I enjoy about it is that they give you a window into the, the non-human world. You know, most people are totally in the human world and don't really care about anything outside it, don't even hardly know it exists. Very few people, I think, really think about that non-human world to any extent at all and certainly to the extent that they can appreciate it you know they they can appreciate it on the aesthetic level but to you know what I find myself doing and what most birders I think do is you see the world you find yourself walking through a forest or driving down a road and looking at um, a lake and you see it from the bird's perspective when you see 
some really nice habitat for this and you come back a month later and it's been changed in some way so that it isn't nice habitat for that species anymore you, you do notice that and you know you don't know what you have until it's gone and sometimes it's it's too late when you wake up and realize that So I think we have a moral obligation to ensure that we don't uh, cause the loss of, of plants and animals from not just the earth, but from significant parts of it, like this valley.